inquiring minds have asked about the time I bought hooch out of the back of a minivan in a parking lot, and I'm not necessarily proud of this story, so I've put off telling it for a minute. But since he asked so nicely, a little while back, I was just having a rough week. And dad had just gotten word that the shop that had been rebuilding his 67 Cutlass 442 motor for the past year because they suck at life, had finally gotten the motor done. And he called me because he needed a ride to go pick it up. And I was like, you know, it's a nice day. I'm going to take my 68 El Camino. And that was stupid because Murphy had declared martial law in my life and I should have known better. Because as we get to the shop to pick up dad's car, my car starts making an awful clicking noise. Turns out the crank pulley and the harmonic balancer had been having some relationship issues. And the crank pulley decided it needed some space. And I was thinking, well, it's already at the shop, you know, maybe I'll just leave it here and have them put a new crank pulley on it. When the mechanic who was looking at my car asked what motor that was, I told him it was a 427. He proceeded to argue with me and tell me that there's no way that that could possibly be a 427 because it's a big block. A 427 is a big block. And in that moment, I decided that my car was not going to spend a moment longer at that place than it absolutely needed to. So I had dad bring me home to get my truck and trailer and ran back there as quick as I could to collect my car. And when I got back, the overly arrogant mechanic with the automotive knowledge of an Amish toddler was still there. And he kept running his mouth while my stress level kept going up and up and up. At this point, a weird old man approaches. This little old guy was being super friendly, asking me all kinds of questions about my 49 Studebaker pickup that I was pulling my trailer with about my dad's cutlass that he'd seen in the shop before and my El Camino, which is fine. Us car guys love to talk about our cars. I was really stressed out, but I put on a good face and, and answered his questions. However, he finally realized that I was more focused on the task at hand and said, hey, just come over to my van when you're done. So when I finished chaining the car down, I walked over to this Chrysler minivan that had car chalk writing literally all over it. It wasn't a car. It was a vanifesto. And he's like, you like to drink? Well, yeah. And he opens up a cooler full of his homemade hooch in reused plastic bottles. First, I thought he was just trying to be nice and share his hooch with me because he appreciated my vehicles. So being Minnesota nice and all, I rolled the dice that this wouldn't make me blind and I sampled some of his alcohol. Turns out this was not the case. He was actually selling the stuff. And once again, being Minnesotan, I now felt obligated to buy something because I had tried them. So I awkwardly spent $25 on some homemade Irish cream type liquor that he put in a re used plastic bottle and sold me out the back of his creepy minivan. I'm not proud to say that I have bought booze out of the back of a van in a parking lot from a strange man, but I will say that it is pretty damn good. Cheers to hooch from the back of a minivan bought from a creepy old man. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty good. So if you ever get the opportunity to buy weird liquor from a weird man in a weird van, I'd say go for it. It was a good choice.